It's playoff day, baby. Yeah? It is playoff day. And very excited to talk a little heat, talk a little NBA with the CEO of Heat Point Guard, Inc., the legend, number 10 himself, up in the rafters, Tim Hardaway. Join us on the Toyota of Hollywood guest line. Shop over 1,500 Toyotas indoors in one of America's largest showrooms at Toyota of Hollywood on 441 between Hollywood and Sheridan. Tim, thank you for the time this morning. Really appreciate it. Hey, no problem. My pleasure. What's going on? Oh, not much, man. We're excited for uh, the playoffs to get going today. Did you always did like the, how do the uh, the juices feel? Like you guys are uh, always in a lot of heated playoff series. Like did it did, did did you feel it? Like was it was it amping up when you knew uh, that that the series were starting and the rivalries were starting this time of year? Well, you always know it amps up. It's a new year. Uh, it starts a new, you know, playoff, uh, a new season. Um, I always, you know, when I was when started playoffs started, I couldn't get sleep. It, it was it was hard for me to get sleep because I was trying. I was I was thinking about how I was going to play, how you know my team was going to play, how was I going to pick them up, lead them, um, and all that type of stuff. So it, it was it was like I couldn't sleep, but it was like it was a good kind of I couldn't sleep because I was ready to play. I was mentally into it. And ready to go, and um, and just trying to figure out what do we need to do each and every game to pick our games up to to to, to win the series, so uh, win that game. So you know it's um it's difficult, but once that ball is thrown up, all the goosebumps go, all the butterflies go, and you get into you try to get into a rhythm, and then you just go from there, and then everything is just let's play basketball. But right up until the start of the game, before that ball goes up. Yeah, you're nervous. You got butterflies in your, your pit of your stomach. You're wondering what your team, how your team is going to come out and, and do, you know, the first five minutes of the game. So, yeah, it's kind of nerve-wracking for, for, you know, about until the game starts. When you were playing in some of these series, how different, you know, was one game to the next with the adjustments and stuff like that? Because, you know, I always wonder, like, if, say, if you just dominating the, the other point guard, um, have to get help for that guy do you already have in your mind okay i'm probably going to have to facilitate a little bit more because they're going to do something about me or you just you know the 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 adjustments from game to game are so uh so drastic sometimes like you said every game is different each and every game in the playoffs is different all right if you come out and you punch a, a team in the mouth like Toronto punched Brooklyn in the mouth by 33, and then Brooklyn came back, cut it within eight. But, you know, they got something to uh, look forward to for the next game Brooklyn Nets does, you know. So 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 Toronto knows that Brooklyn is going to come out hungrier. They're going to come out more energized. They're going to come out ready to play harder. And, you know, they're going to look at the things that get them down eight instead of keeping them down 33. To, um, to improve on. And that's what each game is about. Even though, you know, I have a good game um, or I go out there and dominate or whatever, I know that that team is going to be concentrating on me and sh- trying to uh, control me in a way where I can't control the game or I can't get my team involved in the game. And that's what you have to do. You have to look at what, you know, look at them and say, hey, the team might do this or this team might do that to me and try to uh, calculate what I do or what my team does. And it's just a mind game. But as the game goes on, game two or game three or game four, or each of those games go on, you have to figure out what you need to do to help your team win. And the good players do. They always figure it out. If it's passing, it's passing. If it's playing defense, it's defense. If it's, playing re- if it's rebounding, it's rebounding. If it's scoring, it's scoring. Whatever they, that team needs, he will go out there and try to give them, especially energy. It's all about energy. Don't never let no other team outwork you, out um, energize you, um, go out there and beat you up mentally and physically. You got to come out there and play hard. You can't be scared to play. And, um, and that's what each and every game is about. It's about who is tough enough who is going to bring the energy each and every game, and who is going to play hard each and every game. The team that plays hard always seems to win. 
We're talking to the great Tim Hardaway. Now, Tim, uh, have you gotten a chance to, to catch this Miami Heat team this year? Uh, been a very unexpected, oh, yeah. fun year with Jimmy Butler and the emergence of Bam oh, and Duncan yeah. Robinson. What's what's been some of your favorite things about this uh, this Heat this Heat team and what they bring to the table? Tyler, uh, 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 Duncan Robinson, uh, Nunn, uh, Bam. You know, and I, and I and I like how how Jimmy Butler is just orchestrating everything and having them and, and being confident. In, and putting confidence in those guys to go out there and play because they they need he needs them. But I'm gonna tell you this, right now, Jimmy Butler needs to understand that he is the superstar on that team, and at times he needs to take over games, especially now in the playoffs. And he, sometimes he needs to put those young guys on his back because this is playoff time. Some guys on that other team have been in the playoffs, Indiana Pacers have been in the playoffs, and they understand what playoff basketball is about. The Miami Heat, some guys don't know what playoff basketball is about. If you look at the game yesterday, they didn't call fouls like they did in the <laughs> previous eight games that they that the, that the refs was calling. Everything was a touch foul. You're getting over picks. That was a foul. You can't touch a guy. That was a foul. Even if you look like you're breathing on them hard, it's a foul. Yesterday's games, all the yesterday's games, they wasn't calling those eat ticky tack fouls. They wasn't calling those um, um, fouls where you swipe um, down and, and, and it looked like a foul. It was like letting you play. So these young guys got to understand it's going to be physical. It's going to be physical, and they got to come out and play harder and more physical than what they have been playing. And don't look at the refs. And another thing, Jimmy Butler. Don't take a foul because you're mad that somebody <laughs> threw the ball off your guy. What you expect, <laughs> that's basketball. So you're going to take a foul and just put yourself in a predicament where you got three fouls, you got to sit on the bench, and you're hurting your team. you got to be more um, poised than that, Jimmy Butler. You know you're a veteran. You understand the mind game, especially what Chris Paul is doing. Come on now. So, you know, the uh, Indiana Pacers is going to do the same thing. Uh, Warren, he's going to do the same thing. Uh, you know, he's going to come out. He's going to try to bait you. That team's going to try to bait you because they understand that you're a hot head. So go out there and play and leave that other stuff alone because they need you. Them young guys need you in the game. They need you on that bench. They need you to focus on them and winning games. That's what the playoffs is all about. So I hope Jim, Jimmy Butler is listening. I hope the coaches are telling him that, and I hope he's listening to just going out there, playing his game, and taking over when he needs to take over. I'm glad you mentioned that incident, Tim, because we were talking about that a little bit earlier on the show because Duncan Robinson was explaining what he thought happened and that Chris Paul thought he said something a little bit uh, sassy on the court that led to him getting so irritated. So I was, I was wondering if Chris Paul looked at Duncan Robinson, who's having an amazing year. We love Duncan Robinson, but he's still a young, he's still a young buck in the league, and, and Chris Paul is a, le- he's a, he's a legend in the league so far. So like, is he, has that ever happened to you on the court where somebody who maybe doesn't quite have the, uh, the resume that you do gets a little bit too froggy on the court, and that may, may set you off a little bit extra? I'm going to tell you this, man. Chris Paul... It's Chris Paul. Chris Paul knows what he's doing. He knows how to push people's buttons. He knows what it takes to win basketball games. He knows how to go out there and, and get up under your skin and make you uh, not play basketball but think about getting back at him. He did exactly what he's supposed to do. We all done it. We all do it. It don't matter if you're a younger guy in this league. It don't matter if you're an older guy in this league. If I can rattle you or rattle somebody on your team that's important to the game, I'm going to do it. And that's what he did. Even though he threw the ball off Duncan Robinson, if it went off his head, if it went off his shoulder, if it went off his stomach, if it went off his leg, Jimmy Butler would have had exception to it. No question about it, all right? Yeah, Chris Paul going to say something. All right, I would have probably said something. So what? Say something back to him. Go back at him. But just don't take an offensive foul. You didn't hurt him. The only thing you did was get an offensive foul. And that played into his favor. And that helped him out. So it helped his teammates out. And he got you out your out your game. He got you out of the game. And they, they went on here and won the ball game. 
because you wasn't in the game. So it's just mind games. It's all about mind games and how you can use the Jedi mind trick against other teams and to do what you need to do to win games. And that's what Chris Ball did. And that's what Indiana Pacers are going to try to do. So these guys can't let that happen. Point now, blank. T- Tim, a couple more things before we get you out of here. Now, we interviewed uh, your guy, your running mate, Alonzo Mourne, a couple years ago. And he revealed something to us that we uh, we don't quite buy, and we need uh, we need to get your ruling no. on this. I called it nonsense, but go ahead. He he said to us, and I and I quote him that he has an amazing sense of humor. Now we all, uh, as fans, we only know Zoe as like the intimidator, always always you know bringing the badassery on the court. Uh, is this true that that Alonzo Mourning has an amazing sense of humor, or is 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 uh, is he as serious as he seems on the court all the time? What, what what do you mean? I mean, on the court and off the court is two different things. On the court, I'm he saying- takes it very seriously. He takes his game very seriously. He wants to go out there and win harder and more than anybody on your team in practice. He he works on his craft. Um, you know, he takes he on the on the court. He takes it very seriously. Off the court, you know, he's just a human being. He's just a human being. Um, um, you know, he uh, he's just a human being. I mean, he, he's cool. I mean, he he he's um uh, I mean, he's not like uh, like me. You know, overbearingly <laughs> gonna talk to you. You know, gonna kick it with you. What's up? How you doing? take a picture and stuff like that hey, he's not like i'm saying me, i'm, I'm saying Tim, I, I know he's a, i know listen i know so is a great uh, a great dude and has done amazing stuff uh for the community i'm saying like is zo is zo a guy like he'll 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 uh laugh out loud uh jokes at jokes at the party like is he that kind of guy because he made it seem oh, like yeah oh yes? yeah 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 we if we out kicking it yeah he gonna joke at the party he gonna tell some jokes he might joke about you um um, he's gonna talk to you and stuff like that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So so cool. I mean, he's not like um, you know, like uh, uh, who can I say, like Dennis Rodman, somebody <laughs> like that. You know, that, that that might scare you or something like that. No, so cool. He he he's fun to be around when we out and about. But you know, you know when he's you know when he's on that court, he's very serious. I mean, yeah, it's but, business I mean, time. But that, that's the way he was. That's that's the way he was taught. You know, when you're on that court, it's all about business. It's all about trying to win, and it's all about trying to intimidate the other team. That's what he, I mean. That's what he's all about. Uh, and finally, hey, we need a ruling. Know me, you know, but I have a, an amazing sense of humor. You know, you just don't see that side of me too often. So, uh, do we, uh, and I don't now know. We know. It, I don't know. I don't. I don't know if it's amazing, <laughs> but it, it, it's all right. There we go. <laughs> hey, hey. I'm, I figure, I figure you see Zoe at a party. He's standing in the corner snacking on rocks, right? <laughs> <laughs> like just, just hard. <laughs> he might chuckle. No, no, oh, no, no. Nah, nah, nah. he, if he had a party, he he If you tell him, come on over here, so let's kick it. He'll come over there and kick it with you. All if right. Y'all not uh, acting crazy or nothing like I'm, that. Yeah. I'm All glad, right. I'm glad we got a ruling. And one more ruling before we get you out of here, Tim Hardaway. What is worse in your mind, hitting your funny bone or brain freeze? Oh, I mean, shoot. Um, um, I would say, um, man, both are terrible. I say hitting your funny bone, man. Hitting your funny bone, your whole arm goes numb. I mean, for about, you know, it can go numb for about a minute, minute and a half. With brain freeze, you can brain freeze for about 40 seconds, and you back at it. But you know, hitting that funny bone, ooh. I mean, some, you have to get a sub. You got yo, sub me out for a couple of minutes. <laughs> that, 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 that ain't nothing nice. That ain't oh, nothing man. nice. Yeah. Uh, Tim, thanks for talking some playoffs with us, man. Enjoy the games, and uh, and thank you for spending some time with us. We really, really appreciate it. Thanks, Tim. All right, go Heat. Go Heat. Oh, that's a legend right there, Leroy. Man, that made my morning. <laughs> Are you okay, Robbie? Why would you guys have to ask that question? <laughs> hey, that's Tobin. Oh, man. That's so I didn't really get into like point guard CEO, you know, no, like not, at the interview. Not, wait, did did you not even apologize for even bringing that up? I apologize. I apologize. <laughs> Somebody said Alonzo Mourning doesn't tell jokes. He threatens jokes. <laughs>